Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. This state-of-the-art masterpiece took stealth to the sea. The F-35C, the carrier variant of the Joint Strike Fighter, stands out from other variants with rugged landing gear, structure, and folding wings. While the F-35C is brimming with technological advancements, launching a fully armed F-35C from an aircraft carrier remained to be demanding and perilous. Today's feature covers what it takes to catapult this multi-potential fighter into the sky from an aircraft carrier. The F-35C inherits the largest wingspan of all the variants with 43 feet, which could reduce to 29.8 feet when the wings are folded to save deck space. The landing gear is manufactured to take the beating of catapult launches and hard landings on the flight deck. The dual-wheel nose landing gear comes with a launch bar to facilitate catapult launches. The wing is made 45% larger than other variants to introduce better low-speed handling characteristics. Catapulting an aircraft is no easy task. The chain of actions that takes place before putting the aircraft into the sky is extremely critical. Airmen with purple float coats or grapes become busy refueling the fighters, while air wing plane captains with brown float coats conduct a walk around. Usually, an aircraft is refueled as soon as the aircraft is arrested to improve mission readiness. As the aircraft carrier crew gets their first-hand experience on a stealth fighter F-35C, all sorts of flight operations are carried out meticulously without affecting the stealthy characteristics of the fighter. Apart from that, the F-35 Lightning II houses the most advanced sensor suite with other state-of-the-art avionics. While the F-35C is not the heaviest to operate from an aircraft carrier, it's relatively higher weight due to the strength and structure and larger wingspan to increase controllability and payload incurs more tension on the launching and arresting systems. Currently, the F-35C has proven its success with steam-powered catapult launches and arrested landings from Nimitz-class carriers. The catapult launch of the F-35C is done the same way as a usual fighter, like the F-A-18 Hornet. Once the aircraft is ready for takeoff, the pilot taxis to one of the four catapults. The launch bar of the nose gear slides into the shuttle assembly. This can push a 48,000 pound fighter to 165 miles per hour in just two seconds. As the name implies, 
The impetus for the movement in steam-powered catapults is provided by steam stored in a 16,000 gallon wet accumulator. A holdback bar is fitted to the nose gear via its holdback fitting and restricts any inadvertent movements when the fighter is at full power. When the right time comes, the shooter releases the launch valve that ports high pressure steam from the wet accumulator to the launch engine pistons that drive the shuttle. The holdback bar disengages when the pull from the shuttle is exerted. The aircraft accelerates along the catapult track and then releases from the shuttle at the end of the track. During a landing, four arresting cables are laid across the runway. Pilots extend the tail hook expecting to be arrested by one of the wires to stop the fighter. An aircraft carrier without its aircraft launch and recovery equipment is just prey floating on the sea. With that said, the U.S. Navy takes every single action to keep its catapults and arresting gears in the proper condition. Aviation Boatswain's Mates Equipment, or the ABEs from the Career Air Department's V-2 Division, takes care of the aircraft launch and recovery equipment. Components of the arresting gear, including cross-deck pendants, leaf springs, sheaves, and the components of the hydropneumatic arresting engines go through scrutiny periodically. What they're doing right now is they're cranking down the cylinder covers, making sure everything's all right in the line and good to go. You got two sets of cylinder covers for each track. Each cable is inspected for any damages after each landing and undergoes a thorough inspection after a specified number of arrested landings. With all the things on the flight deck set up perfectly, Designated crew members undertake the demanding task of controlling flight operations and deck movements. The Airboss oversees all operations from the primary flight control, or PryFly. sitting six stories above the flight deck and the aircraft handler of flight deck control on the carrier's island with his Ouija board. <laughs> on an aircraft carrier, this old school looking Ouija board is an exact model of the aircraft carrier that displays the status of the flight deck. They think there's a sucker hole out there. They might try to do CQ, so it may be a little wait time. The position of the aircraft and other equipment are replicated on the board and changed in liaison with the actual movements. As the Ouija board provides the best snapshot of the flight deck at any particular moment, the Airboss contacts the flight deck control handlers for continuous updates. The Integrated Catapult Control Station, or the Bubble, is another vital station that mans the catapult officer.
Within the bubble, the control console and the monitor console offer the required information for the catapult launch. But the catapult officer lacks situational awareness due to the position of the bubble. With that said, he seeks assistance from flight deck control to improve his awareness of the flight deck and to ensure the flight deck is ready for a catapult launch. Thanks to the multi-role capability built into the F-35C, the fighter is capable of deploying from land bases as well. Like hot pit refueling, these fighters are capable of loading weapons while the engines are running to chop down on turnaround time. The F-35C could hold weapons weighing more than 5,000 pounds in its two internal weapon bays. In a hot load, the ordnance crew maintains at least six feet from the jet intakes to avoid any ingestions. The ordnance crew pays extra attention during a hot load as some parts of the jet are heated and the possibility for accidental discharge hazards is relatively high. The extendable probe located toward the nose section of the fighter jet is extended to mate with the drogue to receive fuel from the tanker. Thanks to the larger wing of the F-35 carrier variant, the fighter has a 20,000 pound internal fuel capacity, offering a range of around 1,200 nautical miles. In correlation to the superior physical properties built into the fighter, the state-of-the-art targeting technologies made the F-35 formidable by infusing lethality and survivability. The Electro-Optical Targeting System, or EOTS, that comes with all the F-35 variants provides an unparalleled air-to-air -air and air-to-surface targeting capability and combines the functions of a forward-looking infrared radar and infrared search and track system. The vital data garnered from these advanced sensors are fed to the fighter's integrated core processor, where the processor provides the required data to the pilot's helmet-mounted display. The helmet is made lightweight to reduce fatigue on the neck and is built with active noise reduction for explicit communications. All the vital information improves situational awareness and spatial orientation that will heave tactical superiority of the fighter. The F-35C holds all the requirements to serve as the primary fighter for the U.S. Navy. The right assortment of novel technology with stealth features made the F-35C a groundbreaking addition for the U.S. Navy and its allies. In the years to come, it will be the heyday of the F-35C, and the world waits to see it achieving greater heights. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.